So friends with a new culture. Well, never like give, give up your authentic self. Um, so I had, I read a book once, uh, and this guy is really graphical, so some people won't like him, some people will like him. Um, the one thing that I would get from this guy is his message, which is always be very, very authentic to who you are, because those are the people that uh, help. So when I was like approaching people, there are like a ton of people that will tell you, um, be like, hey, like, where's the Starbucks? And then you start chatting with them. So don't do that. <laughs> because of the fact that, and that's what this guy, Alan Roger Curry, talks about. He says, you're approaching a person for a specific reason. Um, so be upfront and honest about it so that there's no manipulation. And he calls it mode one. And then you have mode two, which is the not upfront and honest. That's like where you start like, Hey, what's up? Like, hey, have you heard about like that TV show the other day? And then out of the blue, you're like, hey, so we're selling this product. And then these people feel cheated because they're like, I thought you wanted to have a chat with me and here you're selling shit to me. So be upfront and honest about the entire thing. Um, and if you're upfront and honest from the beginning, then you can like become friends with them and everything. So if your goal is to become friends with them, then think about, I want to become friends with people, and then you're chatting with them, and then you're like, hey, what's up? And you would ask genuinely, and you would listen genuinely. And when, when they get cagey, those are usually the people that are very much mode two. So they're very like, they would manipulate. They would be like, probably selling you something, or wanting to get something from you. So this is how I filter those people out. When you are mode one, that's what he says. When you're mode one, upfront and honest, there is no room for manipulation. If you're mode two and you're like going under the radar, you leave room for manipulation and so you get manipulated back. And it's in that manipulation back that people get mad. So the people that initially manipulated get manipulated back and then they're like, Oh, what? Like, why did you do this to me? Had they been mode one, upfront and honest, they would not have been manipulated. Now, the reason many people don't like Alan Roger Curry is because he uses very graphical, like, examples. But the key message, like, stands there. If you're upfront and honest, and you genuinely want to bond and help people, and you're positive about it, your reactions will genuinely show that. And so you would go to any place, even a Starbucks, and you would approach a person and you'd sit next to them and be like, hey, is this seat free? Can I sit next to you? Can I chat with you? People will accept you with open arms. The people that won't accept you, those are the people that are mode two. They are the people that would usually manipulate. Or, or they're maybe super busy or they had a bad day or something like that. But you'd be surprised. And so, and then again, conversion rates, and that's where my analytical mind goes in. If you approach 100 people, like two or four of them will become really good friends of yours. You never know. And how do you get the quantity in an environment like this? Um, you go, like every Thursday, there's a networking night here with people. Uh, and you just approach. You're like, hey, man, what's up? Like, you want to chat? <laughs> you said at the beginning, you really should to close to someone for a reason. For specific reason, but some 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 people they don't, don't benefit or something. What you what what you mean with this close to this? No, you you have to know what your reason is. Like if you want to have a job, you approach in a different way than if you want a friend. If you want to have a friend, you go to specific like events, like you join a club somewhere, you start chatting with people. Um, and you're just up front. You're like, that, that, I just moved here, so what am I doing? I'm going to these events, and I'm like, uh, like not the networking nights. On the networking nights, I'm like, <coughs> I'm business, because that's my mode one. I want business there, so I'm talking about business. But if I'm like at a, like I do martial arts, right? So I go there, and I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, what's good in Rotterdam? Where can you go out in Rotterdam? And then they start talking. I'm like, hey, do you like want to go there together? And, um, and so, is there like much of a culture gap? There's always a culture gap, but if you are mode one, the culture gap won't play that much because there's 
like there are differences, but the difference won't play that much. Have you ever heard the story where um, a guy and a girl meet up and like they have a date on Google Translate because they don't speak the language? And so I've heard these stories and I've actually seen these stories, like people that do that. So, and, and the reason why is because they know why they are there and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which culture, which language, it works. And the same goes with friends, the same goes with business. If people know why you're there, becoming a friend, wanting business, then it won't matter if your culture is different, like as long as like they accept it. Do you know what I mean? And the same goes here. If you're constantly positive and you're really wanting to have friends, then you approach all these people super positive. Hey, like, hey, do you want to go like for a drink? Some people will say no. Some people will say yes. And those people can become friends. So and the same goes with Dutchies. And the people that say no, those are usually the people that are mo too, or they have wrong preconceptions. But those are the people that you don't want to be with. You have a, you have a, I feel I have a gap between, because I'm 28 right now, and the person is 28, I make a friend of 28, I feel a gap, because I left everything in Syria, and he had everything here. Yeah. So I feel, I, yeah, in, some way, in some way I give him a feeling, I am close to him for benefit, for for reason. He have a full-time job, he have a car, yeah. he have a, many friends, he have everything, and I have little things. Okay. So this 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 cab gives me a little bit of not comfortable, not uh, trust okay. in myself. So is that his problem? Yeah, it's this a, what I feel. I don't but feel then is it his problem or is it your problem? Uh, it's your problem, I think. It's the way you think about yeah. it. It's the way but you think. Do you see that? So when uh, do you see it or not? No, they no. So that's so bad. bad if you're going to think that you don't have anything to offer, then at one point that's going to be the case. And then it's not going to work. While if you feel that your friendship is enough to offer, that's what you're going to feel. So you are already being Mo2. You're not telling this person how you feel. You leave room for manipulation, which at one point, somehow he'll be taking it because self-fulfilling prophecy. But if you were mode one from the beginning, which is, hey man, like I really want to be friends with you, and I think that we have like a good connection, you're really cool, I'm learning a lot from you, uh, but I feel like I don't have anything to offer for you, how would he answer? He would also answer mode one. He would answer, hey no man, be whack. <laughs> But do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. If you leave room for manipulation, that's what's gonna happen. And then you're gonna eat yourself up. And you're gonna be like, I'm not good enough. And I've had friends, like I've had myself where I had friends like that and I was like, why is he friends with me? I don't have anything to offer. And it's only that at one point where I grew, where I found my skills to be good enough that I was like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't think like that. It's the same thing that that woman told me once, which is, just approach it positively. If you would think yourself to be good enough, you'd be good enough, which is the same thing that I just said to you. The biggest issue is that people don't believe they're good enough, which is they always take the path of comfort then. You took the path of comfort by not telling this person how you feel. And one of my mentors always said, um, he said, in life you're gonna always have crossroads. And on this crossroad, you always have a path to comfort and a path to growth. And you always have to take a path to growth. It's always less nice, uh, sometimes it's horrible, but at the end, it's the best thing you could do. And the same thing goes in those moments with that friend, potential friend, which is mode one is always the path of growth. It's always the one where there's no manipulation, and it's always the one where it saves everything and it exposes everything. It exposes the people that manipulate as well. But in that sense, it's always about you. If you don't feel good enough, everything's gonna shatter until you feel good enough. And, and this is where the commonalities between the me and you guys come in a little bit, which is um, until I realize that, 
everything was going shit. And the moment I realized that, my life started going up. And, and I didn't have the luxury to <coughs> feel like that. I didn't have the luxury to feel shitty about myself, to not feel good enough, because I lost a lot of friends on, on the way. And so I realized it really quickly. And you guys, with all due respect, also don't have the luxury to feel like that. You have to restart an entire new life in a new country. So you need to figure out a way where you feel good enough as fast as possible. Whether you go learn a new language, a new skill that you can offer your friend or something like that, or you just accept that you are good enough by being mode one with this person. You don't have the luxury. People that grow up here, that have a nice life, a nice family and everything, and, and they don't go in the flow of life, they can do whatever they want. But you guys are kind of caught on this river and you need to figure out shit fast. So that's kind of my advice to that. 